2015. And then we're going to talk about some practical usage for students and educators. So um, we are from St. Lucie Public Schools. We are in Florida. And today with you, my name is Julia Hilburn. I'm a technology support specialist. I work in professional development at St. Lucie Public Schools District Office. And I have two fabulous coworkers with me today, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves as well. So Lori. Hey everybody, my name is Lori Boyer. I'm part of the Office of Teaching and Learning team here and I work with um, our magnet schools. I'm the magnet schools coordinator, super techie, love all things tech and um, I'm a girl tech innovator with Julia and we have a great podcast with you listen to too. Definitely. Dana? Hey everyone, my name is Dana Miller. I'm with the Office of Teaching and Learning with St. Lucie Public Schools as well. I actually work on the same team as Julia. I kind of refer to these ladies for tech. That is not my specialty, but um, coaching is. And so that, that's what brings me here today. So I'm super excited about this. So in our district, let's just quickly talk about implementation and management. Since we know that there's a good amount of people on this call who have not toggled into using Swivel yet, let's see how we do it in our district with 40 schools, 2,500 teachers, 40,000 students, and one tech specialist. And you read that right. I mean one. I am the tech specialist for our district as far as title-wise goes. As you know, I have a team that is behind me and helps in every way that we can, and we're just kind of training the masses, but this is how it works. So, we started with a simple checkout process via digital forms. So we have a good amount of swivel robots located here at the district office that our teachers and our schools can check out via a digital form, whether it's Google or Microsoft. Um, that form has the rental agreement policy, which just as I understand when I'm checking out, it allows them to pick their rental dates and their return dates. And then we ask them if they're willing to share their recordings with us. Sometimes we don't ask for them. They can say no. It's just, uh, you know, if we ever wanted to go back on record and see where, who we can fall on, that's how we do this. What we have found is that with this simple process, they just complete the form. They're going to receive an automated email with the rental dates and return information to them. So it lets them know like, hey, I'm checking it out on this date and I have to return it on this date. It also includes a swivel video. So what we have found is that we don't allow swivel checkouts for longer than a two week time period. And that being because after two weeks, it tends to lose its value. It's usually sitting in a classroom, teachers get really busy, coaches get really busy, and they don't get to use it as much as they thought they would. So we have them return it. And then when they're ready to check it back out, they'll go through the process again. We also don't allow checkouts over any holiday breaks. So if it's over Christmas break, the swivel device the robot itself must be returned to us before they go on break. If not, cords tend to get lost. It was placed to the side. Someone cleaned up. It just, um, in, in our district, we found that this is kind of like a best practice situation. What we also do is that video. So I created a quick two minutes uh, recording video that allows the user on the other end to actually just watch the video at any time. So if they check out a swivel from us today, but they don't open the swivel for three to four days, they can go back, watch this video. It shows them exactly what to do. It has all of the, the, the pieces of the swivel, the marker, which one does the tracking, how to use student microphones, how to connect it to an iPhone versus an Android. And what's nice about this is you can share it multiple ways. So QR codes are posted on every swivel box. We send it in that email. We put it on flyers. When Dana has someone that reaches out to her asking for a swivel, she can do all of this without having to do any of the training. So it's just a, a really great way to kind of get that video out to the masses. And, you know, that's really important to think about if you haven't utilized swivels yet and you're trying to do that at your school, your district, whatever it might be, you want to make sure you have a process in place because then it just makes it simpler and that ease of use so you don't have barriers to entry as far as trying to utilize it for the first time and beyond. Definitely. A lot of times people don't want to reach out and ask for help for three times in a row so they can just watch the video as many times as they need. Another thing is we have some common reasons why teachers are fearful of recording themselves. So it, we're trying just to, to trust the ease and how do we stop some of these common comments? Like, can students be in my recording? Do I have to notify parents? I'm not sure if this is 
perfect enough to record? We hear that one a lot. Um, can I limit who has access to my video? Will this be used for evaluation purposes? Is this more work for me? What if it doesn't, what if I don't set this up correctly? What if I mess up or am I being monitored? My favorite one is the camera adds 10 pounds and I can't afford to have 10 pounds added, right? Everyone says, I don't want to be on that video. So how do we kind of pop all of these bubbles to get our teachers ready to record? We assure them that it's easy to implement and easy to to learn. So once again, going back to that video, trying to share it out as much as possible. We always assure them that it is private unless they choose to share that video. So when they do the recording and it goes into the Swivel library on Teams, it's theirs. Unless they choose to share it out with anybody else, they're the only ones watching it. If it didn't go well and they made a mistake, they can delete it. It's okay. Also, we try to provide real life recording examples whenever possible. So what I mean by this is if there is an opportunity for Lori or Dana or myself or anyone on our team to do a swivel recording or use a swivel robot to do a recording, we do. And then that way we can share it out and people are kind of asking like, hey, how did she do that? Or can I do that? That looks really neat. I would like to learn more. And then they can go from there. It also allows for new teachers to observe veteran teachers without needing that classroom coverage. So we always use um, recording videos in, in sports, right? Sports teams are constantly recording themselves, watching it back, seeing what they did wrong or how to improve. Why are we not doing this in education? So this is kind of what we're doing. Instead of taking our teachers out of the classroom, having to provide substitutes, we're now allowed to record these teachers who are doing great things. And then we can show it to our new teachers to kind of give them those examples. That one's huge. It's that one's favorite. a really huge one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we're going to focus on the students right now. So how are we using Swivel in 2022? I have to be honest, pre-pandemic, it was the very teachers record students watch. We were having our teachers um, record themselves for absent students, extra support for students. We were posting these videos to our LMS and then this way students could watch them back at any time. It was extra support. PE teachers were recording themselves doing workouts or proper forms so students could watch it at home if they were absent or obviously with the pandemic. And kindergarten teachers were, were reading stories to their students using these robots, math teachers doing their math problems. All once we went virtual, this kind of just blew up in that aspect. So now, it's kind of like basic 101, right? Like that's recording 101, just what we know it for, but you've cranked it up a notch now in 2022. Absolutely. We're flipping the script a little bit. So before we were having our teachers record, students were watching it. Now we're saying students record, watch, receive feedback and pass the assessment. What do I mean by this? So we were, we started and I want to be very, very trans Formational here, transparent, I should say, is that we are no expert in this area. This is brand new to us. And it started because one CTE teacher reached out. She went to a swivel training over the summer and she wanted to use it in her classroom with the idea behind having her students watch themselves, um, kind of like what I was just talking about in, in sports. But she didn't want to do it alone. She's like, I only did this over the summer. I'm not quite sure I'm going to be able to do it by myself. Can you help me? Absolutely. And then our arts educators are actually using it as well. So instead of me showing me talking through this, I'm just going to show you this quick video. Good morning, everyone. I am here at Port St. Lucie High School today with Miss Lori Appleby's class. This is her CNA class. And today they are going to be utilizing the swivel in their classroom to kind of go through all of the checklist items on the state certification to become a certified nursing assistant. So as you can see, I'm standing here with one of her patients who's ready for this class to start. And then this whole classroom is set up like a really neat um, hospital room. And she has all of these patients patiently waiting to visit their, with their CNAs. The kids are gonna go through a checklist that's provided from the state. 
record themselves using swivel, and then at the end they will watch themselves and decide if they meet all of the, the checklist items, the criteria to become certified and pass that state exam. This is a great opportunity for them. We're so excited to be using this technology and can't wait to see the outcome. Thanks. So that was the very first time doing it. It was really neat. I have to say I was there for the first day of the recording. Right after I made that video, I was able to watch all the students come in, kind of panic and freak out that they have something recording them. Um, and the best way to describe it was it was almost exactly as if I was the state observer that was standing there with my checklist, you know, ready. They were so nervous. So I thought it would be neat if you could hear it directly from the teacher herself. So we went ahead and did like a quick little interview to kind of show you how she thinks it went. So our question was, why do you feel that having your students record themselves would be effective? I thought it'd be effective um, was so they can sit down and watch it. And I give them actually a copy of the little checkpoints. And as we're going through it, they can check off whether the student did it or not. And um, through that, they can say what they're doing well. Like some of the students would notice, oh, she really talks, communicates really well. Oh, she does this really well, or he does this really well. So it can give a lot of feedback to the student to know what they're doing and I call it constructive criticism. I said we're going to watch everybody got taped. We're going to watch everybody and just see would you pass them based on would you would you rate them? I think it gives them a way to look at what how the evaluators are rating them and what exactly they are looking for. Absolutely. It's very powerful to watch yourself. A lot of people don't like to see themselves on camera, but when you're kind of in this situation, it really does help. While I was there with you on that very first day of recordings, I kind of noticed that they were a little nervous. What are some reflections that that you notice with your students on day two and three of recording? They were still nervous. They were still there. They're still nervous there. And I tried to tell them the swivel was like the evaluator because they're going to have a stranger in that classroom with them. They're so used to having me there. And I think I'm their little crutch because they will look at me like even when you were recording the day you were there, when the students stood there, and I knew she forgot something. And she was just looking at me trying to see if I was going to give her the clue, the answer. So this is that power of having students watch themselves, right? Like I, I loved, I already said that something was my favorite, but I think I might be lying because this is really powerful too. And it was really neat to watch. Lori, do you want to speak any to how we're yeah. using it? I was just going to say that, you know, oftentimes like this is a CTE class or you have singletons, like we call them throughout the school district, where you may be the only one on your campus per se that's teaching a certain subject area or, or whatnot. Well, these are great ways, whether you're an arts educator, a CTE teacher, a content teacher that's singleton, to be able to um, record and see what's going on and then have the students be able to reflect on it as well as share it out, you know, across different campuses or your own campus to other teachers that are in, and students that are in need. And I just think that the way that uh, this CTE teacher took it and was really innovative with wanting to truly prepare her students for the final outcome. So, you know, preparing with the end in mind and knowing that they're going to be assessed by an outside evaluator, this really helps to calm their nerves and set the tone so they could be successful. <laughs> um, I was just going to say we have some great things coming into um, the Jamboard right now. Uh, everything from observing pre- pre-K classroom teachers, which huge shout out to the pre-K uh, educators out there, the early educators setting that great foundation for kids. Um, I also like the idea, you know, one was saying they were reflecting on their classroom management, which is, which is so great because you know what, we're in those four walls all day long as an educator. And sometimes it's great to just truly see from a different perspective instead of our view out to the class from their view into us. So that's another great way that they're using it. I love that. I actually think it's really powerful for classroom management. I was um, visiting with some teachers today just doing kind of that and, and, you know, telling them that this is what it should look like, but they don't get to see what it should look like with their students and then being able to go back or recording other teachers who, you know, are doing amazing things in their classroom with classroom management and transitions and being able to show that to even our new teachers is really powerful. 100%. And I love the idea that they're using it for self-reflection, which I think is where we're going next. It's such a critical piece of, of 
um, like learning, right? Because as educators, we're, we're continual learners. And the fact that um, we're continuously self-reflecting on our own craft um, in order to make those improvements in the sake of student achievement is so critical to what we do. Absolutely. Which brings us right into this next part. So now we want to focus on the teachers. So Swivel in the 2022 classroom, the teacher focus. So pre-pandemic, teachers were recording for professional development and basic classroom observations. It was very traditional, kind of like the same we talked about with our students, where our teachers were recording, our students were watching. This kind of had that same concept. Our teachers were recording and our teachers were watching. So what I mean by that is for reading endorsement certifications, we were pushing, you know, for, for teachers to get all the way through one through five. And on one of those, they have to actually record a lesson lesson. And then someone like Dana would have to watch that lesson. So instead of spreading herself so thin and traveling to each of these schools at different times and scheduling all of these observations, we check out swivels to those teachers who are enrolled in reading endorsements. They can use them to record their lesson, upload it into our LMS. Dana can watch it and give that feedback directly to them. Um, it also, we mentioned a bunch of times, allowing those new teachers to our, observe our veteran teachers. And then we also follow the gym night video-based feedback, that self-reflection growth teaching style, um, which is kind of that self-reflection in video-based um, feedback. So this year, I'm talking all about coaches and not sports coaches. Uh, relying on a coach has become a popular form of professional learning in all walks of life. There are life coaches, athletic coaches, uh, even dating coaches, but the type of coaching that we're using in education is that instructional coach. Every, all of those coaches have one goal in mind, and that's helping someone get better at something important. Instructional coaching is that specialized approach to supporting others learning. So how do we help our teachers get better at what they do? That's that record, reflect, and grow piece. So Swivel has actually developed a really strong relationship with Jim Knight, who is a video-based coaching expert. Uh, we follow that same process in asking our teachers to record themselves and then reflect and grow. One way to help teachers get comfortable and use video coaching is by asking them to identify two sections of the recording that they like and one or two sections of the recording that they would like to explore further with their instructional coach. So if you're already familiar with video-based coaching, then you'll definitely want to listen to how we took this same process one step further and we provided um, that, that instant feedback in the least invasive way. So I'm actually going to, yeah. Oh, Dana, I'm going to go back one slide so I can toss it over to you. Thanks. I did just drop um, a link in the chat um, to Jim Knight's website. It is instructionalcoaching.com. And so um, when we were really looking to move into this reflective part of instructional coaching for teachers, um, when at, at the very start of the year, our kickoff in August, uh, we introduced them to instructionalcoaching.com and these amazing checklists so that as we were um, you know, promoting the idea of teachers being able to just uh, video themselves, re reflect privately on their own instructional practice. There are two checklists in particular that we asked them to share with their teachers. So one checklist is called Watch Yourself, and the other checklist is called Watch Your Students. And again, our teachers were, um, after they recorded themselves um, providing a piece of instruction in their classrooms, the checklists were provided to them so that they, they could look at both of those pieces and they did it privately um, without the coach sitting right there with them because that then turned into the reflection piece, that reflective part of coaching that is part of the, um, uh, the impact cycle, which we promote greatly here in St. Lucie Public Schools. Hey, Dana, I see a great question in the chat. Um, can you talk about as far as the recording aspect, is that optional or required for, for the teachers when they're taking part in it? Great. Thank you, Lori. That's an excellent question. So we don't require anyone to do anything that they're not comfortable with. So when we introduced this concept to coaches and they started um, checking the swivels out through Julia, they um, we do 
promote them going with the willing, right? Because we know coaching is difficult and, and some people are going to embrace the idea of having coach, coaches um, bring them through a coaching cycle and some are real hesitant about that. And so the same thing comes with using a swivel, right? So coaches uh, presented it to their teachers, um, let them know that it was an option for them and then they went with the willing. So anyone who was interested in um, going through the coaching cycle in this way, that's how they proceeded. And uh, we found that they had um, more interest than they were actually expecting. So it was really exciting. That coalition of the willing can be very powerful when you're trying to mm -hmm. implement something, right? Absolutely. So um, in addition to Jim Knight's co uh, impact cycle and using the swivel for that reflective part of um, teachers and their practice embedded with coaching, in our district, we also use Get Better Faster. Get Better Faster um, is a coaching book. So all of our coaches receive this book um, and we do a lot of um you know, sort of book studies and uh, pedagogy sessions around Get Better Faster. And so what happens is once a teacher records themselves using those checklists from instructionalcoaching.com, then the coach would sit down with that teacher and they would just look at the checklist and they would reflect on the checklist and talk about, okay, so based off of what you saw yourself do and what you saw your students do, what is your goal? What would you like to change in your instructional practice? What can I support you with? And then based off of that goal, goal setting, which is in the identify stage of the impact cycle, Get Better Faster then provides our coaches with um, great coaching activities, prompting questions that they can use and strategies to use in the classroom when they are coaching teachers through that particular strategy that they are looking to focus on in their instruction through that goal setting. And so we really wanted to pump it up a little bit more. So Julia, if you wanted to, yep. So with Get Better Faster, they talk about um, all of these degrees of real-time feedback. Um, and so they talk about going from least invasive to most invasive and Get Better Faster actually comes with CDs with videos on them where our coaches could actually see each of these real time feedback practices happening in a classroom. So one is a silent signal, and that could be like a hand signal that the coach and the teacher decide on. So when the coach is in the classroom, um, they might throw up a hand signal or they might have a whiteboard in the back of the room that anytime the coach wants to prompt the teacher to do something in regard to that strategy, they could do that. And then there's whisper coaching. And I think we've seen that, or some of us have seen this in our profession, where the coach would be in the classroom um, with the teacher, and then they could just very quietly at a stopping point through that instruction, go over and whisper something in that teacher's ear to prompt them for their next move or that coaching move that we wanna see. And then we also have modeling, right? So we have very simple um, modeling where the coach may interrupt just to say, um, ask a, a question to prompt the teacher, oh yeah, I should be doing that. Um, or an extensive model, a 10 to 15 minute actual modeling session by the coach. So the teacher could see that instructional strategy in place. But we really try to go for the least invasive way of coaching as possible because really, what we want teachers to do is maintain their power in the room. And we don't want distraction for students. Oftentimes when there's another person in the room, the kids are distracted by that person being there. The teacher could become distracted if all these signals are going up right away or the coach is running up to whisper something in their ear and it may sort of distract their flow. Um, great coaching practices, absolutely nothing wrong with it because it's how we get better at our craft and how our coaches support our teachers. But what if we could go even less invasive in the classroom? And this is where Swivel has really come into play. So Swivel has um, a whisper feature that not many people knew about. We, I, I believe it's new. We just found out about it at the beginning of, of during the summer. Um, and Julia found out about it, got super excited. 
Um, and so we were talking about how we could use this feature and why. So really this is why, right? It's the fact that there's no delay in improving the learning um, within the classroom. That as a coach, we see the problem in the moment and we can make that quick fix right away. It's not waiting until the next time the coach comes into the classroom and it's practice in real time. Um, we do prompt the idea that we use as few words as possible when we're providing the feedback so it's quick and immediate and not distracting to the teacher to stop their flow of the lesson. And again, it's not invasive in what they're doing. So Julia, what happened next? So I was really excited. I'm always like super passionate about everything, but this is uh, definitely my jam. So the training and implementation, and because we have so many of you on the call that really haven't got to use Swivel um, in their classrooms or in your districts yet, we're going to kind of talk a little bit more of, of what this looks like, just because I don't want anyone to be lost. So when you have that swivel robot, and I actually have one right here that I could show you. The best part about it is there's the marker that the teacher wears. So I'm holding this here in my robot, but there's the marker that the teacher wears like around her neck, his or her neck on the lanyard. There's like a little clip, however they choose to wear it. But the best part is, is that you then, the, the teacher themselves would plug their earbuds directly into this marker that they're wearing around their neck that tracks them around the room and is also the microphone. So that lifetime feedback is now in the teacher's ear. They are choosing to do live streaming, whether it, you know, we use Microsoft in our district, but it could be through any of your live streaming products, Zoom or, or Teams. And that instructional coach is joining the team's meeting. So if I've lost anyone, all they're doing is setting up a virtual meeting and then their camera is what is on the robot. So then on the robot, which is sitting somewhere in their classroom, it's going to start tracking that teacher's every move. Then in my ear, I have an instructional coach who's kind of guiding me through with as few words as possible. Obviously, they're not going to give me like a dissertation in my ear. It's going to be distracting, but nobody else is in the room. I didn't lose control. No one's taking over for me, and I'm getting that live feedback that I need as a teacher. So how did we convey this message to our instructional coaches? By doing just that. Dana and I hopped on a call. She said, hey, can you train us on how this whisper feature is what we're calling it works? So I went into a conference room. I had a whiteboard behind me. I plugged in, got my robot ready, wore my marker, plugged in my earbuds to my marker. And then Dana told me what to do with all of the coaches on that meeting. So they Every single coach that joined that team's meeting was able to see me in that conference room, walk around, pretend like I had students. And then Dana was in my ear saying, okay, now write the target on the board or write today's date. Make sure you're standing closely to the student in the front was kind of guiding me through so our coaches could see exactly how easy it was to pull something like this off. Um, it's just that real time feedback. And then what we also like to do is we're a huge fan of one page support documents. So we just kind of created this document that we send out to anyone who's looking to do this type of um, swivel work. So it can go out with that video that we use, but it just kind of gives them the instructions for how to start some pro tips that we found along the way. For instance, if your phone is set to not rotate the screen, you need to take that off. Or if you're using Apple um, uh, earphones or you know the wired ones, you need to make sure that this ear is in and not this ear, it doesn't transmit sound. So just some of the things that we have run into those best practices, we put them on a one page support document and then we send it out with anybody who's interested in doing it. I was just going to say, I find that to be so powerful thinking about that, that whispering happening in the ear, because also if I'm a newer teacher and I'm trying to understand like the flow of my lesson and when to throw in some of those things, like prompting with questioning and, um, you know, addressing the target of the lesson, 
having that happen, it just gets you really familiar with what it should feel like too, which when you can feel it as a classroom teacher, then you can implement it on a regular basis. Sure. And Julia, if we could have um, just screenshot, right, the, the chat during that meeting, uh, our coaches were blown away by this feature, by the fact that they could do it. They knew that their teachers, one, it becomes less invasive because it it's not a recording, right? So when you do it this way, it's not um, a video that's gonna be saved somewhere or uploaded somewhere there. So it takes away that fear of go, oh gosh, who's going to see this? It's literally being coached as if you were standing right there in the classroom without evidence of it ever happening, except in student achievement, right? That the teacher right then and there can shift their action through that instructional coaching. Our coaches, I, Julia, did your form not blow up? All of a sudden, like 30 schools wanted to take the swivel like that day. <laughs> Absolutely. I had to turn off notifications because we were still in the meeting and people were signing up to check out swivel. I was like, whoa, what is happening? Everything was, was blowing up, but it was it really was powerful. And I think it was cool to watch everyone's faces because I would start to turn and then Dana say, oh no, no, don't turn yet. This, this student still needs you. And, and I would turn back and then everyone would be like, oh gosh, she can hear us. You know, it was, it was really neat to just kind of see the impact and, and how their, their wheels were spinning to use this. And I like that it's just something. Some comments. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> You are getting some comments in the chat about the one pager and Julia is notorious for these one pagers. They are amazing. Such an easy, non-threatening way to get information about the products that we use. Um, and so for Swivel, this was, um, this was genius. This kind of goes back to that. Um, how do we deploy all this information out with just a small, small team of people? Anytime I can create a video or a document like this to share out to the masses or allow others to share out for me, it just saves all those questions that come in. And to be honest, I mentioned this before, but a lot of teachers don't want to ask questions. They're nervous. They feel like they should already know this. They're like, ah, I don't want to ask her how to use this again. So this kind of stops some of that fear too. I would like a copy of the one pager if you're willing to share. I do Definitely don't mind sharing uh, at all. So I, unfortunately, I don't have it up and ready that I could share a link with you right now, but I would be happy to um, find a way to do that. And then I see that it was asked um, that I have teams in my one pager. That is just solely because we are a Microsoft district. So we use teams, but when you're inside of that swivel, um, inside of the app, the teams by swivel, it gives you the option of your live streaming platform. So I see that that Rachel was um, answering the question as well. And I know that on this, we're kind of sharing the best practices and, and the real, real usage, but we also use this in really fun ways as well. So we just got, and I'm totally sharing our information, but we just got this machine in our, our district office that makes salads and you can like order it and it does this rotation thing. It's a robot. And they wanted awesome. everyone to come and demo how it worked. It was like this little training at lunch that they could show us how it works. They put it in the smallest hallway possible. And then there was like 55 people that showed up. And I'm like, why are we not swiveling this? We could be setting up a swivel robot. This could record it or, or live stream it on Teams and everyone could watch from their desk. So uh, we're always trying to just find fun ways to use it because it really is helpful. And if you're new to using a swivel robot, it's really, really helpful, the tracker, because so many times people will record something. Hey, let me just make a recording and share this out with people. But you know what? You can't, the audio is not that great. With this, it tracks you visually and you could hear the audio just so much better and so strong. It just makes the whole experience more powerful. 
and it follows you around the room. So if you're, yeah. I'm a pacer. So when I give uh, in, in face-to-face presentations, I'm over here and then I'm over here. And sometimes I like to go to the back, especially if I'm teaching a new, you know, ed tech strategy and I want to see what people are doing. I, teachers are like that too. You don't just stand in one place. So usually right. if you're setting up some kind of tripod stand with a camera, no matter how you're choosing to record it, it's not going to necessarily follow you. And that's the really nice part about all of this is, is you don't have to have someone. I like to think I have my own camera crew, but I definitely don't. So this kind of helps with that. So I'm glad we're going both to that up, Julia, one second. I'm so sorry, but I'm yeah. glad you both brought that up because um, I, I'm not sure of the audience, but we did mention about using this for our, our reading endorsement, right? That RE5, which is a practicum. And part of that is a classroom observation. Um, and when we were full-blown pandemic and everyone left and I had 30 teachers waiting to become reading endorsed, um, that was, you know, time to shift and change. Um, so coming back using this swivel for teachers, the videos that were being uploaded while teachers were at home still teaching it was really difficult, as Julia just said, right? Because it may, their phone may have been set on a tripod or they did a Teams recording with their students, almost like a Zoom meeting. And it was hard to really see everything that was going on and hear everything that was going on. So when we introduced the swivel um, for these classroom observations, it was incredible the difference in what we were able to see in, in that instructional practice. And so really um, now for our reading endorsements, unless it's a small group that I'm doing the observation for, um, we, do, we do have them use the swivel so that we can truly see that classroom movement hear the instruction, watch what's happening around the classroom, um, and hear student conversations as the teacher gets near them. Thank you, Dana. I remember the first time, if we would go back a couple of years, when we first were working with swivels, and that's literally what we did at first, right? We stood in the room, we put the tracker on, and we just started making noise and walking around and having it record us. And I was cracking up the other day because I came across that recording of me and one of my colleagues just giggling away going this is the coolest thing it totally tracks you and I could hear everything so great so don't we be afraid to take the leap you know Absolutely. We have used this in so many ways. It was hard to pick just a handful of them. I mean, when we have people who can't be on interviews, we use the robot and then we can share it out. Or I have so many in my little cubicle, like walking back and forth, making sure that it's working before I'm going somewhere else. So definitely don't be afraid to just test it out by yourself. That's always my favorite thing to do, you know, just to make sure. So, and I did just get confirmation for all of those asking about the one pager that there can be an email follow-up to our um, our attendees and we can share that out with you. So that'll be coming your way. All right. So what I want to do right now is the same thing we did with the student focus. We want to do it with the teacher focus. We are going to drop a link to the next Jamboard in the chat. And we just want to know if you are planning to use this with your, your faculty, your staff, your teachers, what does that look like? Or if you are currently using it, let us know how we were interested to know. So that is all we have for you today. So what I'm gonna do is we are going to pass it back over to our Swivel team. I know that we wanted to leave time for Q&A. So our team is going to remain here if you have questions that are specific to something that we are doing or um, maybe you know best practice question that we could help with. If you have Swivel questions, particularly for them, they are also here. So please don't hold back. If you have questions, we're here to um, help you. And then I know that Swivel is gonna jump back on with some, some, some endings. You know what, Julia, as people are getting their questions together, um, something that I wanted to kind of go back to when we were talking about the student perspective of things, um, really touching on the power in that student uh, reflection part really that they're not only owning their learning, but then they're owning their growth, you know? So they're they're taking 
whatever it is that they need to demonstrate, whether it's something in a CTE class or whether it's um, something that, you know, maybe steps or procedurals that they need to go through um, in order to be showing their competence in something. But then when they're, we think that they're so comfortable on camera because they, you know, they Snapchat, they this, that, whatever, go on TikTok, make videos. It's not the same, right? So they actually do, they do get nervous being, you know, on, on camera. And it's just a really great way for them to say, huh, I see myself doing this and then being able to prompt them on, okay, so what can you do to adjust and grow? And I think that, um, you know, a combination of a teacher trying it out in their classroom for their own growth and reflection, as well as for their students, could could really reap some great rewards. Definitely. I think, you know, one of the strongest things that have come out of this whole virtual learning is just seeing that mistakes are made and it's okay. And we're all doing this you know, together and trying new things and, and there's power behind that. Absolutely. And I see that there's a question um, from Miss Jody out there who's saying that they're starting from scratch. So they want to know kind of like what technology is needed when starting to use a swivel so the teachers can upload their videos and share with the instructional coaches. So I know that was always our question is, do we use our own phones? Is there a certain device that we need to use? So uh, Julie, you want to touch on that one? Sure. So um, honestly, in our district, you know, we're on a tight budget. I think every district is. So what we did was we purchased those robots um, and we house them here. And I, we don't have like a whole room. I wish we did, but you know, they're limited. That's why we do the two week checkout thing so we can get them right back. Um, and then all they really need is some kind of device as in a smartphone. Um, we did though purchase a, I would say 10 to 15, around the same amount of swivels that we check out on a daily basis of tablets. And then we do allow teachers to check out a robot and a tablet. Um, but I, if I'm being honest, the amount of tablet checkouts is nowhere near as high as, as just the device, the robot itself. A lot of people are just using their own phones. So technically to get started, you really just need this and then they need a pair of wired earbuds. And that swivel app, right? Which is where those videos. Right, so right. And that's part of, of downloading the app onto that device, whether it be the tablet or their phone um, that they're using. And then it's cloud-based that all those videos will go right up. So it doesn't you know, store on your phone. It's not like you're taking up space. Mm -hmm. Those are great questions. Oh, I saw a great one uh, that someone had posted in here. They're talking about hosting an after school PD uh, with their staff and so that they would um, swivel themselves during the presentation to model it um, for ease of use. And then they like to offer an incentive for teachers to actually try that. And really that is so powerful when, when you're trying to encourage someone to jump into trying something out, whether it's a strategy, an application, whatever it might be and you're modeling it and then incentivizing them. I mean, we're all just like big kids, right? Kids love it when we do that for them in the classroom and we love it as adults too when we're trying to learn and grow. Absolutely. So to go ahead and wrap up, I do see some comments that came through the the chat. So if you're not monitoring the chat, um, this is recorded. So you can watch this session within the next few days, and then you can expect to receive your gift card with the email that you registered with. So whatever email address you used to register for today's uh, happy hour style webinar with us is how you will receive that lunch um, gift card. So once again, uh, that's it. That's as far as we have. There's some uh, contact information on the screen. And then if you would like to connect with any of us from St. Lucie, we have that information as well. Um, that first slide kind of shared our LinkedIn and our Twitters. So um, feel free to follow us and ask if you have anything. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. We really had a great time with you this evening. And um, whatever you chose is your two to to 2222 um, event. We hope that you go and, you know, spread joy, have a margarita, eat a taco, whatever it is that you're going to do today, a baked potato, sweet potato, Walk whatever it is. Walk your dog though. <laughs>
<laughs> Don't appreciate walk it. your dog. <laughs> we thank you for being here with us. We had a lot of fun. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a great one.